Early Mayan civilization began around 1800 BC, and the number system they developed was pretty weird, but in a lot of important ways, it was similar to our beloved decimal system. In our system, if you take a number like 2, 3, 4, each digit represents a different quantity based on its position in the number. The positions increase from right to left, so the 4, as we know, represents represents four ones, the three represents three tens, and the two represents two one hundreds. Each place value represents quantities that are ten times bigger than the place value before it. And for a system like this to work, it's necessary to have a symbol for zero, a sort of placeholder for a place that actually doesn't have anything. This represents 301, where the one is counting in the ones place, but the zero is telling us that we have zero tens. In order to get to the three, which represents three one hundreds, we need to have some symbol to put here to represent the lack of tens, so that we're able to get to the hundreds position. The Mayan system had all of this. It had zeros and it had place value. But to understand the one thing that made it pretty strange, you first need to understand some basics about the Mayan calendar. The Mayans simultaneously had two different sets of symbols for enumeration. There were symbols used by priests, and there were symbols used by common folk, and they were hugely different. Priests would use these pretty horrific looking faces of gods carved in stone to represent dates. But the common folk had a pretty nice number system consisting of dots, bars, and shells. Here's a look at some of those faces of gods the priest class would have used. I'm certainly relieved that we will not be recreating those today. For the common folk, these simple symbols were enough for the entire number system to work. The dots represented ones, the bars represented groups of five, and the shells were the symbol for zero. This is in fact one of the earliest, though not the first, instances of a number system having a dedicated symbol for zero, and in fact the Mayans invented this independently of any earlier discoveries from other civilizations. Now like I said, the priests used these ornate faces of gods to carve dates in stone, so dates in the calendar were a big deal, and the way they counted dates is pretty similar to how we do it. They understood there were 365 days in a solar year, and they broke this year up into eight 18 months of 20 days each, with an additional 5 days at the end of the year. These were called nameless days, or considered days of very ominous bad luck. Nobody knows what sort of dark things could happen on these final 5 days of the year. In total though, between the bad luck days and the normal days of the 18 months, you get a full 365 days. But since the months were all 20 days long, they ended up using a base 20 number system. Just like our system is base 10 and called a decimal, a base 20 system would be called vigesimal. So that's a cute name, but in the case of the Mayan number system, it doesn't quite tell the full story. Let's try writing some numbers. Here's a Mayan number. What do you suppose the value of this number is? We've got a bar with two dots above it. Since the bars represent fives and the dots represent ones, no surprise, this is equal to seven. In their number system, larger numbers that need multiple place values were written vertically in a descending order. So the biggest groups would be at the top and then the units would be at the bottom. So another example of a number could be this dot and then below it, we have this shell. What do you suppose this is equal to? To assess the value of this number, we need to understand that it's a base 20 system. So this shell in the ones place represents that we have zero ones. But then this dot in the next place value up represents that we have one 20. So this is how we would write 20 in the Mayan system. Let's try another one with three place values, and this is where it gets weird. Let's say we have two dots in the third place value, maybe a bar and a dot in the second place value, and let's say a single bar in the first place value. What is this equal to? 
you may suppose this is five ones that we have at the start. And then the next place value representing the 20s, well, we have five, six, six of those total. So six groups of 20. And then going up, we go up another power of 20 and we have two there. So that would be two groups of 400, 400 being 20 times 20. That would then give us a value of five plus 120 plus 800. And so we may evaluate this number as being 925. Now, it's likely that the number system was used this way at times, but from the Mayan perspective, this pure base 20 system had a problem because a lot of the times this number system was used for date keeping. It was for calendars. And from that perspective, the third place value representing groups of 400 is a little strange. We're in base 20 by default because the months have 20 days, but the years have 360 five days, so they thought it made more sense not to multiply by 20 to get from this place value of 20 to this one of 400, but to instead multiply this place value by 18 so that the next place value represented groups of 360, which is much closer to the length of a year. So with that perspective, these two dots at the top wouldn't represent two 400s, they would instead represent two 360s, the number of days that are in all of the 18 total months. Thus, this number would actually be 5 plus 120 plus 720, so 845. Well, they break from the pure base 20 system by multiplying by 18 from this place value to this one. Thereafter, they only multiply by 20s to get the next place values. Thus, in the Mayan number system, the bottom place value would represent ones. The next one up would represent 20s. The next one up multiplying by 18 represents 360s. And then from there, we multiply by 20s. So after that, the next place value would represent 7,000 and 200s, and then 144,000s, and so on, continuing to multiply by 20. Respecting that the third place value represents groups of 360, let's see if we can do this addition problem using Mayan numerals. I invite you to pause the video and give it a try yourself before we go through this. Beginning our solution, let's first focus on the ones place value. We've got a shell in this number, which is zero, and we have seven in this number. So that's straightforward enough. That's just going to be seven in the sum. Moving on to the second place value. On the left, we have 17, and on the right, we have six. 17 plus six is 23, so that's 23 groups of 20. 18 groups of 20 is going to pop a dot up to the next place value, so that's 18 groups of 20, and that leaves behind 5 groups of 20 in our second place value. In that third place value, we have the dot we just mentioned coming from 18 groups of 20, and then we're adding that to the 11 groups of 360 that we already have here. So the 18 groups of 20 from the second place value gives us one group of 360 plus these 11 groups of 360 we already had. So in total, that is 5, 10, 11, 12 groups of 360. And then in the fourth place value, we just have eight groups of 7,200. Now that wasn't so bad. What is this number on the right actually equal to? Well, in the first place value, we have seven ones. In the second place value, we have one 20. In the third place value, we have five, 10, 11, 12, 360s. And in the fourth place value, we have eight 7,200s. Add this all up and we get 61,947 back in our comfortable decimal system. I can't find any information about how the Mayans might have carried out their arithmetic, but one thing we might think about is multiplication by 20. In our system, since it's base 10, multiplying by 10 is really straightforward. We just append a zero. Every digit moves to the left one place value because of the multiplication by the base number of 10. So something like this, 324 times 10, it just looks like that. 
3,240. In the Mayan system, multiplying by 20 should be similarly easy. Every numeral would just move up a place value because of that multiplication by 20. Although, of course, there will be some weirdness going from the second place value to the third because of the multiplication by 18. But it's not all too difficult to account for. So here's a number with four place values, and we're going to multiply it by 20. Do you remember how to write 20? It is just a dot with a shell underneath it. So that dot is representing one group of 20. Badly drawn shell, but oh well. So we've got this number multiplied by 20. How do we do it? The simple part is that multiplying these ones by 20 is just going to have the effect of moving them up one place value. Multiplying these 360s by 20 is also just going to move them up a place value. And multiplying these 7200s by 20 is going to move them up a place value. Now for these groups of 20 to move up a place value, they need to be multiplied by 18. We're doing a little bit more than that by multiplying by 20. So we can view it as multiplying by 18, which will move this up a place value, but because we're actually multiplying by 20, not only is this going to get moved up a place value, but it's also going to leave two copies of itself behind. 18 copies move up a place value, two get left behind. Sorry, I wrote times two there, I probably should have written dot dot. So then carrying this out, since the ones have been moved up a place value, we're now going to have nothing in the ones place. So we start off with a nice shell. What we previously had in the ones place is now in the twenties place. So that's three bars with two dots. But also what we already had in the twenties place is going to be doubled and left there. So instead of two bars, we'll have an additional four bars. And instead of two dots, we'll have an additional four dots. I'll just write this horizontally for now and we can fix it in a minute. So four bars and four dots. And we'll have to bring these together for our final answer. This same numeral, which we had in the 20s place, also needs to get moved up to the 360s place. So now instead of a shell in that third place value, we'll have two bars and two dots. The shell, which was in the third place value, is now getting moved up to the fourth place value. So we have no 7,200s. And then at last, the seven 7,200s 7, gets moved up a place value to the 140. 44,000s place. That's at the top of this number, and now we're almost done. All we have to do now is deal with this awkward second place value. How much do we have here total? Counting the bars, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then counting the dots, we have six dots, so 41 here total. We can view 41 as two groups of 18, since two times 18 is 36. So it's two groups of 18, which can be moved up into this place with two dots, and that's going to leave five behind. Because there's 41 here total, we're gonna move 36 of those groups up into this place value. Like we said, there are 41 groups of 20 here total, so since we're moving 36 of them up a place value, that just leaves five groups of 20, or a single bar, behind. And then, in the third place value, we still have those two bars and two dots above them, plus an additional two dots because of the 36 groups of 20 that we took from this place value. 36 groups of 20, of course, is two more 360s. That's why we have two more dots. The rest of the number is unchanged. And there is a simple multiplication by 20 in the Mayan number system. Pretty fun. So that's how the awkward base 20, not base 20 Mayan number system works. It's mostly base 20 because of the 20 days a month, but it has a touch of base 18 because of the 18 months per year. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.